Blog Talk Radio. Good evening, and welcome to Read You Later, a fun, captivating show that discusses the best in arts, entertainment, and political activism. And this month, ladies and gentlemen, we are bringing you the Entrepreneur Series. And this series will focus on boss babes, women who are doing it in their fields. And this young lady that we have tonight is no stranger to Read You Later. She is a director, a producer, award-winning author, and screenwriter. She's the CEO of Siri Austin Entertainment. And she just happens to have just um, done a marvelous, marvelous job with the iconic work, uh, Deadly Sexy, um, from the iconic Beverly Jenkins. And if you have Amazon Prime, you can stream for free. And I know pretty, pretty much everyone I know uses or utilizes Amazon in one way, shape, or form. And if you don't have Prime, you can rent it and you also can purchase it because Deadly Sexy is a project that you will want to see over and over again. And tonight, she's going to tell you some of the ins and outs of developing your brand and developing your business and being consistent. So I am happy to welcome back to Read You Later, Iris Bowen. Iris, welcome back to Read You Later. You make me sound so good, Michelle. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you so much well, for having me. Well, thank you for coming on. Now, Iris, a lot of people know you as an author, but they don't really know um, you behind the scenes as a businesswoman. So can you first mm-hmm. tell my audience what is the very first thing that you need to develop if you want to be a entrepreneur that is doing business as a business and not a hobby? I think the first thing that I would advise people to do is to make sure that you have a plan, not just in your mind, but write it out so that you can clearly see it and put that plan, even if it's just a basic outline, put it somewhere where you can see it, I mean physically see it every day so you you know what's in the forefront of your mind. So the first thing that I would tell or suggest, not tell, but suggest, is that you have a plan in mind for what it is that you want to do. And make sure that it's flexible enough for when opportunities just happen to fall in your path, you'll be able to take advantage of each one of those opportunities. So the first thing I would suggest is that you have a plan in mind. Now, there may be some people in my listener in my listening audience that may not be familiar with a business plan. So can you give us mm-hmm. some tips on how to develop a business plan? Well, when for me, I can only you can only speak for me. Um it was it was pretty easy. Um I knew that I wanted to write. I knew that I wanted to write for myself. So I Um, first developed um, an outline on what it was that I wanted to do. If I wanted to write, if I wanted to go traditional, if I wanted to not go traditional, if I just wanted to um, do it for myself, I knew I needed to establish my own business. So to do a business plan, you need to just make sure that it consists of um, certain things. You need to know an idea of what the business is, what the, what the industry is like that you're planning on working in. For me, publishing and writing, because I do, do both. So you need to have an idea of what that industry is like. That takes research, researching um, the industry itself, researching if you want to be an author, research some authors that write in the gen- genre that you're interested in writing in. So that's the, that's the first thing that you need to do. Then the next thing you need to do, believe it or not, you need to get some idea of the market. What's the market for the business that you're planning on going to? Have an idea of who you're going to be marketing to 
and what it is that they like and where you can find them. That is so important. You need to know where to find the people that your product is going to be delivered to. Um, see who's out there doing the same thing. You know, who are the competitors? Who, or, or you may not look at, at them as competitors, but who's out there that um, publishing or doing independent writing or um, just doing their own thing in the field that you want to get into? Um, just have an idea of what else is out there. Um, marketing. Um, have some type of plan on how you're going to market once you determine who your market is, who the clientele will be, how are you going to market it to them? Are you going to market it through social media? Are you going to market it through email? Are you going to market it through print material, um, televised material? Have some kind of idea of how you're going to market what it is. And then you need to have a management plan. <laughs> Surround yourself with good people who are stronger in areas where you are weak. Um, I, I, I don't know how else to explain that particular one. Like I, I know how to organize things. I know how to um, write good stories. I know how to put a film project product together. I'm a good organizer. But I'm not so great at PR or public relations. I'm not so good at marketing. So when you put your management team together, identify your weaknesses, and then you find people who are stronger in that area than what you are. Um, and bring them in to be a part of your team. Um, two, two, just two more things real quick. One, make sure you have an operation plan in mind. Make sure you know who's going to be handling what. Um, get some details as to um, how that's going to be handled. Have something set up where you have staff meetings. Even if the people aren't in the same state that you are in, set up something where you are going to do conference calls so you all know that you're all on the same table and what direction you're going in. Make sure you have a strategic plan in mind of what you have for um, coming up for each year. So for 2019, I've already established what we're going to be doing or concentrating on for this entire year. You need to know where it is that you plan on going, and your people need to know it too. So make sure that you have a good operations team behind you. Make sure that you have people who are stronger in the areas where you are weak. And make sure that you have one person, just that one person that's always on your back to try to get you to move forward, to take you out of your comfort zone. And that will keep your business fresh. It will keep new things happening if you have a person like that on your team. But make sure you have an operation there, team in mind. Now, I got one more one that's really important. Said, one more that's really important. Okay. One more that's really important, finances. Make sure that you have oh, somebody yeah. on your team who is good with finances. They know about taxes. They know about um, um, accounting. They know how to keep your books. They know how to count your sales. You know they know how to record those sales. Make sure that you have someone that is really good in financing as well. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I know. Well, one word you say repeatedly is team, 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 team. Yeah, and I think that a lot of people overlook that um, because, um, sadly, uh, as, as a whole, uh, a lot of times, especially women of color, have been taught um, you really can't trust other people. Uh, you need to do everything for mm -hmm. yourself, and then you become exhausted and overwhelmed because. Um, you don't mm -hmm. have a team. You don't have someone to pick up those pieces and pick and pick up that slack. And so you said that right. word repeatedly, team, team, team. What should mm -hmm. you look for when you are crafting a team? I know you were talking about the elements, but what should you look in a person when you are crafting a team? When I, I'm going to be honest with you, putting a team together, could, a really good team together could take you years. Um, it's, it's having the right combination of people with the right 
temperaments, with the same goals, with the um, same drive that you have. Um, when you when you go to put a team together, I've been very very fortunate to um, I have two two well really three different teams. I got a couple of teams. <laughs> I have. I have um, my belief team who works with me um, as far as my books and and helping to promote my books and helping to promote me as an author. And with that group of people, we have about 10 people on that team, and they live in different parts of the country. And they actually come in and help um, for me. They help me when I do book signings, when I have events, things of that nature. And it was finding the right um, personalities to fit into um, that particular team to make it as successful as it is. Then I have my my team um, that I work with when I'm filming, you know, and it was finding the right skill set, the folks with the right skill set, uh, with the right drive, with with the same coming in with the same work ethic um, that I have. Um, to put that film team um, together. And then I have my my staff, what I call my Siri Austin um, staff. And most of these are, are contract people who, who actually started with me. A lot of them are people who started with me when I first started this journey of writing, and they have remained with me. And the thing that uh, so wonderful about these good people is they believe in me. That, that's a huge part of developing teams is make sure that they believe in you and they believe in the, in, the, um, in the dream, so to say. They believe in the dream. They believe in the company. They believe where things can go. So when you put together a team, you got to look at skill sets. You have to look at um, personalities because you can have a perfect skill set team together, but the personalities don't clash. I mean, they, the personalities clash. They don't click. And when that happens, I don't care how skillful they are, that person is not clicking um, with others or a number of people that may not be clicking with the entire team can, can bring the team down. So you need to make sure that the personalities click, make sure that the skill set uh, work uh, that you need to do with your particular um, project that you're working on. So you have to look at so a number of you different have to things. Do, so there, there's a piece where you have to do some re reflection adjustment um, as a business owner. Yes. And I think that a lot of times um, people, when they're in business, um, that's one thing that they fail to do. They fail to reflect and readjust because we all have to readjust in life, and business is part of that. And one thing that it's you've done really um, right. as far as re- readjusting is Siri Austin and Iris Bowling, you separated them, but you also make them both in- in- inclusive of each other. Now, on your website, on your SiriAustin.com website, you do have workshops that help um, budding authors seasoned authors and mm-hmm. people who uh, perhaps are interested in production or bank right. script writing or things of that nature um, to develop their skill set and help them to develop a team. So can you share with mm-hmm. us uh, about your book to film um, workshops and what people can expect um, if they want to seek out these services? Well, I have I have – Currently, I have three different workshops. I have one that is I call Greenlight Your Self Pub. Those are for self-publishing um, people who, who are coming in, and they could be really at any point in their career. And that work, workshop will assist them um, in, in different areas. Um, and that particular workshop, it talks with them about um, the different the different aspects of going in and getting your book from that idea in your mind all the way to the point where they're they're on a shelf or or they're um, somewhere where it can be purchased by the public and all steps in between. So the self publishing workshop is is just about that. It helps you to um, identify what what genre are you writing in. Some people don't even know that. 
um, the different aspects of writing your True. your your manuscript, how to form how to format that, different um, storylines, how to develop your characters, um, how to be true to yourself. But then there's also the other aspects of it, like the legal aspects of it. You need to know about copywriting. You need to know about um, Library of Congress um, numbers. You need to know about your ISBN. And then we talk about the different writing resources that they are. What kind of software do you use? What kind of tools um, do you need? What kind of computer system um, do you do – you, it's best to work uh, with for authors. Um, you also need to know about cover designs. You need to know the business side of it. It's cover designs, how you put those, decide what you're going to put on your book covers, then how you're going to brand your book, how you're going to market your book. Um, that, could, that workshop helps you with that um, aspect of becoming you know, a self-published author. And then you asked about the, um, I have a book to script. I had to break this one down. I had, a, I had it all under book to film, but I had to break it down because there's so many aspects um, to getting your, your book to the big screen. Um, so I had to break it down, and I have a, a workshop called Greenlight Your Book to Script. And what that workshop does is it goes in and it gives you an idea, not an idea, it teaches you certain things on how to break your script, your, your novel down into script format. Because, you know, before you get anything to the screen, you have to put it in the script format in a way that your, your, your film crew will be able to go in and pull out the different pieces that they're going to need in order to get your film done. Um, so you need to know how to take your book, and transpose it into an actual script with all of the different parts um, that need to be included in that script. So that's a typical now. Um, but now, now within yes, this, you also talk about pre pre production, production, and post production, which a lot of people don't realize. Get into there that. are three different entities, three different and entities. they are they could be yes. very uh, time consuming. And also, they can be very expensive. So, in your workshops, yes. you try to assist people and break not only um, not only with the ideas, but actually have have to um, the feasibility of it and how to do it uh, without just completely exhausting your your budget and do it in a way that is um, economical and resourceful mm -hmm. um, to you. So, if you do purchase one of these workshops, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Now, we do have some people on the line, and I'm going to begin with um, a few of these callers. Caller from 252-550. Caller in 252-550. You're on the air. Thank you for calling in. Do you have a question or comment for Ms. Bowling? Hello? Don't Caller be shy. Caller from 252-550. <laughs> I would like to thank you. Tanisha. Hi, um, how are you doing? Do you have a question? Hi. Hi, I do. Um, okay. My question is like, how did you know you want to be a writer? Because I mean, I mean, it's like way back in high school, I used to do a lot of writing. Every now and then. I still do, and of course, I know I'm a book hoard. I love to read, <laughs> and you know. But my thing is, if I decide to go that way, I just don't know what genre I will want to write. Well, what what genre do you read in? <laughs> Contemporary romance. Okay, so you have a favorite. Your your yeah. favorite genre is contemporary romance, so that's that's your first clue, because that's what you like. That's what you read continuously, and that's what you like. So that's your first clue is identifying what genre it is that you would like to write in. So that part was easy. Now, do you have um, story ideas in mind that you do? Are you writing them down? Yeah, I do. 
Girl, she put you in a hot seat tonight, oh. didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, if I you write this down. down. I'm sorry. I I do. You know, I mean, it's like I haven't had great relationships, but with that, I do take note on, you know, things like what not to look for in a man. Girl, you know, look, you may so, have a whole different girl, job. Listen, that's you a look, good you start. That is a relationship book. Look, you may have a relationship. That's a great, that's too, a but... great start. All right. Because exactly. you, you know what things you don't like, so you can write a story with a, a, a hero or a love interest that does the things that you do like. Yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. But it seems like you need to talk to Iris. Look, you you all do need a a one for one. Do you have her information, <laughs> Iris? Do you have information that you can share with her how she can co- connect with you? Yes, we're, we're she on can, Facebook. Um, I'm in her reading group. Well, oh, well, you know well, what you can do? Very connected. Send me send me an email. Send me an email to Iris Iris. What is my email address? Iris B at theoryaustin dot com. And tell me, tell me what you what you would like to do, and let's talk about it. Let's see if we can start getting you into writing maybe a short contemporary romance. And look, and if you do, you know I won't be the first to read. I most definitely <laughs> want to be the first to read. I'm, here's your beta reader right here. I'm making that public. <laughs> yeah, I heard you get I'm the writing. Gonna... Yeah, yeah. Cause I was. Um, I had talked to someone in the Brenda Jackson book club mm-hmm. about becoming a book editor because you know people always say get a job and doing something that you love. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I, love I agree with that. Well, all right, we all got a lot to talk about. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate you send calling me, in. Listen, and, send, um, send yeah, me an email. Sure to get information. Send, okay. me, send an email to, to um, irisb at theoryaustin.com. And you know what? You you said you were in my, my palace group. Send me a message. Yeah, I was send the one that, that was telling you that me and my mom was watching uh, Daily Sexy and the Heart Daily Series. Daily Sexy, yes. And then she started <laughs> going to watch the Heart Series. Thank you very much for that. Thank you so much. And I hope your mom enjoyed it. Yeah, I told Shira Lee I was upset with her because I should have been cast as JT. Yes. Oh, <laughs> look. <laughs> I think Stephanie might have something to say about that. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for I calling in. I Stephanie will have please something to say. I sure will. All right. Thank you for calling in. Okay. Have a great evening. You all too. I'm going to take another caller from 708. Caller from 708. 708- Seven six nine. Call up from seven zero eight seven six nine. Do you have a question or comment for Iris Bowen? Just a just a comment. Good evening, everyone. This is Midnight Eight, and the reason I call you today. today. Hello, everybody. You know <laughs> I love you all. I, Lashira. You know, you know. Blessings to you always. You are a woman <laughs> about your business. Like yes, I, you yes, know, I want to be like you when I grow up. But oh, one of the reasons Lord, I Lord. really took the time to call in is because I am so passionate about not only women of color, but people of color coming together and just, you know, mending our resources together and have everybody right. on top, just yes. not just one or two yes. people or whatever, yes. but everybody. Right. Yes, right. So exactly. I think this phone call is just, it, 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 it was time for that. But I wanted to say, um, I am just an eclectic reader. I love reading, but my also one of my passions is um, reading, but also helping authors to mm-hmm. excel yes. in what yes. they're doing. Um, so if there's authors or anybody that have, you know, mostly authors because I, I read a lot, if what can a reader do, what are some of the things a reader can do um, to help 
um, build your brand, um, you know, not even within the group, but just as a reader, how, how can we build your brand? What are some of the things you would like to see as a reader um, mm-hmm. to help you excel? I would like to say that Midnight is not just talking on the talk. Midnight walks it. Midnight is the head of my belief team, and she does a a wonderful job of um, making sure that the things that I need um, is in place and making sure that the ladies who are part of my belief team are up, up to date. They know what we have going on. And all of them are working in conjunction with each other to make sure whatever we do is a success. Um, Midnight has been heading that up for me now for a little, almost a year, two years now, I think. About a year, um, yeah. And she she does a, a, a wonderful job, and she supports authors, all authors, not just yeah, me. Yeah, I was about to say. So she supports Midnight, all share about, authors. Share about your blog. Well, my, my blog, I, I started, I always have to say I started this because um, because of Amazon. You know, they stopped me from doing the one thing that mm-hmm. I love to do, and that was to review books. Mm-hmm. And I realized that authors <gasps> on Amazon is the best place for the reviews to go. Well, I have, you know, I'm building up another name so that I can review on Amazon. But I started a space that was for me, that was about, you know, my personality and what I love to do. So I have created a space called Midnight Ace Book Bar. And actually, Mm -hmm. I'm going to be blessed and soon to have this in brick and mortar. But Mm -hmm. right now I'm just starting it on. I hear you speaking it. I hear you speaking it. I'm I'm speaking it. I'm speaking it. And I think it's time. So, But in, 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 in the meantime, I got it virtually. And what I do is I review some of the things that I like, which are books cigars, wine, coffee, but I, I do it online. So I read books. I beta read books. I advance read copies. Um, mm-hmm. um, I would like to edit, but I, I'm, I don't think I'm there yet. But anything that has to do with books, you can find on my, on my blog at midnightacebookbar.com. All right, man. All right. Can you give us that link once again, Midnight? Yes, www.midnightacebookbar.com, and that's all one word, M-I-D-N-I-G-H-T-A-C-E-B-W-O-O-K-B-A-R.com. All one word. And, and ladies and gentlemen, and, and, and hang not, out with me. She, she's not joking. She is a woman of a word, and she loves to hang out and help support, and she's extremely yes, she supportive of authors, you'll attend events, you'll share about your book, your release, so please mm-hmm. connect with her. And Midnight is always a pleasure, and thank you for calling in. Thank you, Lashir, for having me. Bye. Well, we have a lot of people on Switchboard, but we only have 90 seconds. So in this brief period, oh, um, wow. Iris, I would like for you to uh, share again how people can connect with you on social media. I have um, several ways. Of course, I'm on, on Facebook under irisbowling.com. I also have a Iris Bowling Book Palace on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter under Siri Austin. I also have a Siri Austin website, which is siriaustin.com. And, of course, I have an Iris Bowling website, which is irisbowling.net. Anyone that wants to reach oh. out to me for any of the workshops, they can just reach out to me at irisb at Siri Austin, at SiriAustin.com. But if you can't remember, she won't mind if you message her. Uh, and thank you for being part of my Boss Babe series. And next week we will um, feature Alicia Carter, who is the uh, PR for from Trina to Bow Wow to a lot of your reality television stars on VH1. So if you're wondering about information about branding and pinching, she is the woman that you need to listen to. So please join us next Tuesday at 7 p.m. And from my heart to yours, read you later. Have a wonderful evening. Good night.